Welcome back, my luxurious fleet, and welcome to part one of the Lexus F Performance line series, where I'll be overviewing the short performance pack history of this incredible F brand from Lexus. And in part two, we'll jump into the future and what that has in store for the entire Lexus F lineup. Hit that like button, I'll see you on the other side, and let's get into it. Lexus just celebrated 10 years of their capable F performance line. In 2018, they announced two special editions for this kind of 10 year anniversary. Uh, you saw the GSF and the RCF. Uh, let's peek into the past a little bit further and see how far Lexus has really come with their performance brand. Um, in 2008, the ISF took the luxury world by storm. Uh, something really no one expected out of uh, the, the docile, boring kind of luxury brand that Lexus was known for. This F performance line was created to battle Europe's most aggressive vehicles, uh, such as the AMG uh, lineup from Mercedes and the M-Class cars from BMW. Lexus had conquered uh, the competition's luxury segments at this point in time. We're talking mid-2000s. Uh, so they were looking to attack on all sides. In 2008, they decided to charge forth with the F lineup against their competition, uh, not only to secure their foothold in the luxury segment, but also make a name for themselves in the performance front. So in this part one of this video series, I'm, I'm gonna be covering all four of the F vehicles that have already been produced from Lexus. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but we're gonna go back 10 years. We're gonna start at the beginning and to kind of assess the vehicles that they've come out with and go from there. In the beginning, there was the ISF in the beginning. In 2008, Lexus transformed their already capable compact sporty sedan into a fire-breathing dragon uh, from the land of the rising sun. The Lexus F engineers dropped a 5-liter V8 known as the 2UR GSE. I've, I've made a video on that and its very first application in this ISF. This also called for a new transmission, and we were blessed with the eight-speed direct shift transmission, uh, which was kind of the forefather of today's transmissions that you see of the LC500 and the LS500. Those are both 10-speed transmissions. I could go into a lot of depth about the ISF, uh, but I don't want to make this video too long. I know it's already going to be a two-part series. I, I have a big place in my heart for the ISF, but I feel like I should I should make an entire video about that car. Uh, and so I'm going to save a lot of that uh, for a future date. And real quick, before I move on to the second vehicle in the F lineup, which is the LFA, Lexus unveiled their F Sport styling packages alongside um, the ISF when it came out. F-Sport is really just a trim upgrade with fancy bumpers, wheels, uh, slightly fancier and sportier interiors. Uh, some also include, not all of them, but some of them will include suspension upgrades with adaptable adaptive variable suspension, also known as AVS. So that's the F-Sport lineup, not to be confused with the F lineup or the F-Series. When we're talking F-Series, we're talking a huge, huge Im improvement in performance uh, with suspension, brakes, steering obviously your power plants are going to be massively more powerful than your standard f sport vehicles or even non-f sport vehicles uh, just to get that cleared out for you guys because it, it can be confusing i know bmw does something similar um, because they have m tuned cars and then you have your your actual m car so i think that's kind of what they were going after is that you had your f sport cars which and in most cases, it's just a visual upgrade um, with minor, minor tweaks to suspension. And I think BMW does something very similar with their M design. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a big BMW guy, but I, I hope you guys who are car people know what I'm talking about. Like the M3 and the M4, the M5, the M6, those are all supercars of their, you know, respective genre of their sedans or coupes. Okay, so now that we know we're talking about the F lineup, which is the super performing tier of their vehicles, let's get into it. In 2009, Lexus did the absolute unthinkable. They announced their very own supercar, the LFA. Uh, if you don't know about this car, you've probably been living under a rock for the last 10 years or so. Uh, this vehicle not only 
took the performance battle to their luxury competition. Uh, they wanted to prove to to exotic car makers, supercar makers like Ferrari and Lamborghini, uh, that they had what it takes to be able to do such a crazy and outlandish task in creating a supercar in which their brand was not known for anything like that, not even close. Starting in 2010, Lexus would begin selling LFA with a total production volume of just 500 cars, 50 of which were the Nurburgring package or Nurburgring edition, whatever you want to call it. I uh, just take a look at this picture. I was very blessed to, when I started working for Lexus, we had one at our dealership. Uh, and within a month or two of me working there, uh, it was sold for over $800,000, which is several hundred thousand dollars more than the MSRP. So it's crazy that the vast majority of vehicles, everyone knows vehicles are a terrible investment, but the certain but certain exotic vehicles made in limited numbers appreciate over time. They're actually good investments. So something to something to just kind of bend your head around. Something that was cool about the Nurburgring edition had extra uh, carbon fiber, it had a s more horsepower, and it also had um, like a big, you know, fixed spoiler when the other LFA had an adjustable spoiler on the back. So it looks super cool. Uh, I'm sure you guys, uh, I'm putting pictures up there for you guys so you can see it. The LFA has a pretty modest by today's standards, a modest zero to 60 time of 3.6 seconds. And in 2011, the LFA Nurburgring package completed the Nurburgring uh, time trial, which is one lap around the Nurburgring, in just seven minutes, 14 seconds, 0.64, which was the fifth, fifth fastest time ever at that point in time in 2011 by a production vehicle. That is incredible. It's, just, it's pretty much saying this is the fifth best performing vehicle ever made by 2011. That is just mind blowing. So there's a few things that made the LFA super fast. They worked with Yamaha to develop uh, one of the best sounding production vehicles ever made. That's thanks to this V10 that they built from scratch with Yamaha. If you, all of you have heard my intro and outro to my channel, that is the sound of the V10 and the LFA. It is one of the most recognizable sounds in the automotive super, supercar world. It's not something you hear hardly anymore with forced induction. Um, it is just one of the most purest and exhilarating engine sounds you'll ever hear. Another thing that, other than the amazing engine that made this car super fast, and most of the car was made from a carbon fiber reinforced polymer, which a lot of your modern cars are made out of. Um, but the, this was very, very futuristic for that time period for the car to be made of such a light and strong material. Base price was $375,000, and the Nurburgring package was a whopping $445,000. Uh, production of LFA ended in 2012 with the 500 car, the final car, rolled off the assembly line. Uh, it will be a very long time, if ever, if we ever see uh, a follow-up to an LFA class car from Lexus. I'm just happy that we got to see such a unique and amazing and capable vehicle from uh, Lexus. And it is one of the most iconic supercars ever made. And it is the flagship of all the F cars. It is kind of like the godfather of all the F cars. All the F cars after that car have really, really tried to take bits and pieces from it because it was so cutting edge at the time that even vehicles, the F vehicles being made uh, today, and even, even the non-F vehicles Lexus is making, uh, that research and development for that supercar has trickled down into their entire lineup, but especially the remaining F vehicles that they still make. Next up in the F Performance Series lineup, was the RCF. It was released in fall 2014. Lexus overhauled their RC Coupe with the F treatment. They slotted and updated a version of the 2URGSE motor that we saw in the ISF. 
uh, but now it produced uh, over 460 horsepower, 467 to be exact, um, at a sky high 7,100, 7,100 RPM. That's a tough one to say. Uh, I believe the last one redlined at 6,800, and this one re uh, redlines around 7,300 RPM. Much of the technology and production methods of the RCF uh, trickled down from the LFA and were baked into the RCF, including a tachometer, like all the instrument clusters in the vehicle, like the, the tachometer, the torque vectoring monitor, the G-force meter, uh, and there's, there's more stuff than that. And of course, carbon fiber uh, used in the RCF was a, made from the same loom that created all all of the carbon fiber for the LFA. In 2018, the RCF received a special 10th anniversary edition to commemorate the, t the F series performance line, uh, 10 years in existence. This special edition introduced a new paint color, Nebula Matte Gray, uh, which we see in the refreshed 2020 RCF track edition that will debut in spring of 2019. The upcoming RCF track edition is the most track worthy F vehicle since the LFA in 2012 was the last time we saw one made. Sporting copious amounts of carbon fiber and sporting an additional five horsepower to make 472 horsepower, making it technically the second most powerful Lexus ever made behind the LFA by one horsepower because the LC500 has 471 horsepower. This track edition comes with much more aggressive gearing and it reduced the zero to 60 time probably at least a half second all the way down to 3.9 seconds, which isn't that impressive for today's terms or today's performance metrics, but it is a rear wheel driven only vehicle. You know, if this vehicle did have all wheel drive, it would probably be around three and a half seconds to be honest. And the last F car that we are going to talk about today, that I mentioned there's four cars we talked about the ISF, the LFA, the RCF, and now we're talking about the GSF. It's a good family hauler. I have a family. This car would be amazing to be a daily driver. Oh my gosh, let's just get into it. The GSF was debuted in 2016 with the same 2UR GSC 5 liter V8 that we saw in the RCF. It also has the eight speed that you see in the RCF. The GSF also received special 10th anniversary F treatment with the Nebula Matte Gray. Uh, with special wheels and brake calipers. To be honest, this is the F car I would pick for my daily if I had a choice of the F cars. LFA would be amazing, but I can't put kids in it. I can't put, probably couldn't put my wife in it. She would hate it. For a daily driver of all the F cars, this is the best one. The ISF is a little old. It's probably hard to find one in really, really good shape, even though it's gonna be reliable, but it's a lot smaller. The GSF, is gonna have a lot more internal room and probably a really nice uh, size trunk as well. I'd be able to travel with my entire family in this thing without sacrificing the godlike V8 uh, and the beautiful styling of the GS Sports sedan. However, it's not all rainbows and unicorns and lollipops for the GSF, and, and all GSs for that matter. I firmly believe that the GSF is the, the swan song for the GS support, sports sedan for Lexus. With the current market, I just don't see the GS and the IS both being able to survive as sports sedans. The eventual discontinuation of the GS will make the GSF even more sought after than it is right now. And it will be kind of an icon for the brand in the years to come. Looking back at the history of the F performance line from Lexus, it's impressive what they've been able to accomplish. But with anything that involves power and vehicles, there, there can't be too much of it. Uh, the public really, so and fans of the brand also really want to see more variants, more F models from Lexus. Of course, we all would love to see an LFA too, a successor to it, but that probably won't happen for another 10 to 15 years if it ever happens. But what's next for the brand, the F series lineup? Well, that's what part two is gonna be for, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled for that video. It's gonna be awesome. I really, if you if you watch my videos, I really geek out about the what ifs of the future of cars. I mean, that is kind of a, a soft spot in my heart. Um, and I really love just envisioning what could happen for these awesome vehicles. So which of the current or past F models do you love? Which one would you have 
over the rest of them. If you had to live with one of these cars, how about how about I put it this way, right? Because all of you are going to pick the LFA. But if you had to pick one of these cars to live with for the rest of your life, which one would it be? And let's just say they're all brand new. Um, even that ISF, let's say that's brand new. And you had to pick between all four of them to be your daily driver for the rest of your life. Which one would you pick? You guys know my answer. I've been talking about the GSF. It is the most versatile out of all of those. And heck, I mean, you could argue that it's it's the second best looking behind the LFA. So hit that like button. I'll see you in part two of the future of F Performance Series by Lexus. And I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.